What's happening guys, Silent Mike, Super Training Gym, Reebok One. Quick favor before we get to the question and answer, what I need you guys to do is click the link in the description box. I did a quick interview, a quick article for Reebok on the Reebok blog. It's there now, check it out, learn a little bit more about me as a person, as a coach, as an athlete. Uh, and I think you guys will enjoy it, so just check it out for me. Now, let's get to your questions, answering more questions. Instagram, Silent Mike with two Ks. Snapchat, Silent M-I-K-3, here we go. What do we got? Have you seriously trained in any other uh, parameters outside of powerlifting? Um, not sure what you mean by that. Come dance with me, come on! Can you come dance too? Exhale. Seven, double touch. Side and side. Now walk up four. One, two, three, four. But I trained as a basketball player. I played um, basketball. 15 years of my life, so uh, I trained in the gym uh, as a basketball player and obviously played basketball um, for, yeah, 15 years. I trained uh, in the gym for basketball from 8th grade until I was about age 22 or so, um, and that's kind of where I more discovered powerlifting age, uh, around age 20, 21, 22, and then kind of transferred more into powerlifting seriously around 22, 23. Would you lose an inch and a half off your penis for the bench press, best bench press of all time? Um... I'd probably say yeah, one, two things. One, I don't think it'd be that cool to have the best bench press of all time, although I do respect it immensely. Um, and then two, kind of counter that, yeah, I mean, an inch and a half is big, but I don't think it matters that much. Look, I'm not going on looks here. All I got is personality. I got a little charisma, a little bit of humor. So that's all I'm going on anyways. So I might as well take away an inch and a half. Maybe? So, yeah, I'll, I'll take the world all-time bench press. Why not? Set it at 750. Raw. <laughs> Weighing 200 pounds. When squatting, do you bend at the knees or hips first? Um, that is a very complicated question. Uh, but mostly, I would say it depends on the style of squatter you are, where you place the bar, and how you're built. Typically, most often, I like to say break at the hips just before the knees or break at them simultaneously. Uh, how did you teach yourself to design programs specifically for powerlifting? Uh, I didn't necessarily teach myself. What I did was study every coach I could, every lifter I could uh, for the last eight years or more. Um, learn as much about training, periodization as I can. Also worked with a lot of coaches. I've been blessed to work with guys like Ed Cohn, Matt Winning, Jeremy Hamilton, Mark Bell, obviously. Uh, so I soak in as much as I can from as many people and then use my own brains to put it together. If you were to participate in another fringe sport, example, Highland Games, holler at your boy, the Fat Owl, which sport would it be? Um, right now, it'd probably be something like uh, Strongman, maybe. If I was a little bit younger, I'd say weightlifting. Weightlifting would be really cool. Uh, I just, I don't have the patience, and I have too much of an ego to be a complete beginner and to suck again. I mean, that's just the truth. Not that I'm some expert powerlifter, um, but I'm efficient at it. I know a lot about it. Uh, so for me to totally suck again would be hard. Strongman is related enough to powerlifting. I think I could do it. Highland Games, I have no idea how to throw a stone. I, I never threw shot put or anything. What or how do you get negative negatives and fear out of your mind before a big lift? Uh, that's going to be very personal, man. Um, personally, I get a little bit of fear before a lift, but mostly how I train some maximal the weights I attempt either in a meet or when I'm maxing out, I'm confident in. Uh, but that's kind of, in my world, that's where loud music comes into play. That's where, uh, uh, you know, I turn on my favorite rap song, maybe sniff a little ammonia, and then internally, uh, I'm just getting really emotional. You know, I start to think about some angry things. I think about uh, people that have uh, either put me down, not believed in me, um, or kind of naysayers. That gets me really fucking fired up. Uh, and then at that point, hopefully my skills and my, my training is enough that I don't have to think about the lift. All I can think about is, is uh, I guess, controlled rage. Controlled rage would be the best thing, but it's gonna be a little bit different for other people. You know, sometimes uh, people, they need to think about technical cues and that gets them over the hump. Sometimes people need to do pre-workout. Sometimes people don't need pre-workout and don't need to get fired up because that gets them more fired up. So just trial and error. Do you have a recovery period after a meet? I get pretty banged up after a meet. Um, I'd say it depends on the person, uh, but typically I tell people to take about two to three weeks off uh, training heavy for sure. 
Um, but uh, moving around is good. If you don't move around at all, you'll get really sore, get really beat up. So pulling a sled, maybe do some light bodybuilding stuff, even body weight stuff, I would suggest for maybe two to three weeks and then slowly work your way back into the heavier weights. What kind of offense did you run uh, when you coached high school basketball? Uh, mostly when I coached uh, basketball, it was just a simple motion offense. Uh, we'd have a couple quick hitters with some, um, you know, double screens or something where we'd get a, a hopefully an easy look off it. But it was pretty basic stuff. And then uh, I was lucky enough that four out of the five years I coached, we had a really talented kid, a really talented scorer. So uh, we'd set some picks for stuff like uh, for him and just kind of let him go after it. He was a crazy shooter, so he could kind of do whatever he wanted. Have you ever tried a keto diet? I have. Uh, I ate very low carb, fairly high fat for a while. I liked it fine. Uh, my energy in the gym, I couldn't get that much work done, and then uh, I was a little foggy-headed, but uh, I lost some weight on it. What is your training schedule like, and how many times a week do you train for the big three? Uh, hopefully, you guys subscribe and you understand that as it changes uh, through my different goals and phases. So right now, I am in a fat loss stage. I will be taking you guys through the cut. Cut it up, cut it up, cut it, cut it, cut it, cut it, hit it, hit it, hit it, cut it. Uh, and so hopefully, you guys stay tuned with that. Will you ever compete in bodybuilding? Uh, I have said that I will compete in bodybuilding at some point. Don't know when, how, or what, how shitty I'll be, but. What happened to the cooking style of Mike? There may be more cooking coming, guys. I've just been crazy busy traveling, so I haven't been, had a lot of time to cook at home, but uh, if you guys like the cooking videos, comment below. I also want you to comment below on that Reebok article. Let me know what you guys think. If you guys want me to do more writing, maybe more articles with some different uh, uh, websites and stuff, different publishers, uh, let me know. I've heard the rumor that fingering your bum whilst bicep curling is good for gains. Could you shine the light? Uh, you know, it may be rumor. It may also just be top secret shit that's going on at Super Training. We're into experimental, uh, non-science tested uh, training methods. So there may or may not be some experiments with bunghole curling going on. Will you ever have another dance off with Lou? Potentially. That could be going down. Lou, call you out, bro. Life of Lou. Step up to me and you, head to head, bro. Oh, speaking of Lou, Ludavez asks, why are you so cute? I don't know, buddy. Maybe I was born with it. Can lower sex drive be a sign of overtraining? Um, I believe it is. Uh, you know, sometimes like overtraining or real fatigue is a real thing. Uh, I know people say, fuck overtraining, my boy CT, Mike Rashid, uh, but it's like a medical thing. I doubt a lot of you have it, but it is possible. And typically, uh, majority of you that may think you have it, you're under recovering, you're not over training. So you gotta make sure you're getting enough food, you make sure you're getting enough hydration, make sure you're getting enough sleep, and then also you're not training like a fucking idiot. Yes, we wanna train hard, yes, we wanna be tough, yes, we wanna work hard and progress, but you also have to have some kind of game plan and some kind of knowledge, if not, Hire somebody, hopefully watch these videos, hopefully learn something about it so you can acquire that knowledge so you don't train like a fucking idiot. There are a couple bench programs that helped you. Um, I don't have exact bench programs, but there may be or may not be. I also saw a question here, Mike, are you going to uh, write any powerlifting programs for the world to use? There may or may not be some stuff in the works. I may work on some kind of bench stuff, some powerlifting, some fat loss stuff that I'm currently going through, and I may be able to share it with you guys in the future if you stay tuned. Twerk video coming soon, bro. Twerk videos coming all the damn time. In your opinion, Mike, what's the best accessory for working your pecs? Um, I like an incline dumbbell press uh, with a lot of reps. Also, just uh, cable flies feel good. Uh, what's your best bench accessory to boost the bench press? Uh, my favorites are bench press with proper volume, reps and sets, getting enough volume and rest in between. Um, shoulder work in general, whatever you might want to do, get your sh shoulders strong and stable. Slingshot press and then close grip. Those are the main ones, guys. Appreciate it. Once again, do your boy a favor. Check out that Reebok article. Link in the description. Subscribe. Like that bitch. Share that bitch. I'm out here, guys. Appreciate you. Let's go! Up! Up!